Hello everybody, my name is Clark Barlow. I'm the chef behind Potential Pantry, which is gonna be a new way of thinking about food for me. It's gonna be across a couple of different medias, print, video, sound. We're gonna get the whole gamut. But today I'm gonna to sort of introduce you to the philosophy of wild waste and wild food through the processing of a new animal for me, a beaver. One of my friends is a wildlife trapper who takes pest animals out of invasive environments. So these are coming out of Mount Mountain Lake here in Charlotte. There is tens of thousands possibly of beaver in this one lake. So they're creating a lot of destructive problems for homeowners on the lake and a lot of different things. So my friend goes in, removes these beavers from the property, and then I don't want to see them go to waste as a chef. Again, wild food and wild waste. So I want to see these utilized to their most full potential. And I want to do this and teach you all because I've never seen a beaver butchery video. So let's give it a go and see what we get into. So, what we've got here is one full beaver. Um, it's been skinned, gutted, everything's been taken apart to the full animal right here. So we're just gonna go through this and I'm gonna take you through my philosophy of how we break this down. So, the way that I like to work is flip it over, working from the sort of inside out. So we're gonna take the bellies off of the beaver right here first. All right, taking the front legs off now. Really interesting thing about front legs on a lot of these animals, very similar to rabbit, very similar to a lot of these four-legged sort of rodent animals. They're not connected typically through any bone. Now, what I'm learning about a beaver right here is it's got a few little bones right here. So we're gonna make a cut, find out exactly where this is. Feels like it's right here pop that bone and then we can just cut right through it. First front leg off. It looks like, I can't tell if this is sinew running through here or just some worms. Again, wild animals, we would be expecting to see some worms or something like this in here. So we're just gonna cut and remove this. Very important when cooking most all of wild game is to be cooking this meat to well done. We're going to make sure that we kill any potential parasites, especially these worms, things like that. That's a lot of why you see pigs, pork being cooked to 165 degrees, things along those lines. So we're killing off things like trichinosis, things that'd be really dangerous to us. So again, coming through right here, finding where this bone is connecting to this shoulder joint right here. I find it easier to come in through the top side of this so I can see where the shoulder is sort of joining right here. I can slide my knife right up under that, cut back, up. I freed that from the cage right here. Just make a couple of cuts down. And then again, just make a pop of this right there. And then we'll be able to take that off. I'm really surprised at how dark this meat is. Um, I don't know why, but I was expecting something maybe a little bit more similar to rabbit, something along those lines. This is really dark meat, very similar to, I mean, it's very similar to the raccoon that I butchered recently, but it is very similar to a duck meat, something along those lines. So now, we'll get here again to the inside part of the animal. I see that we've got, this looks like a liver. So we're gonna take that out. Nice little fun find there, beaver liver. We'll make our own little organ box over here. Now, very important with beaver, same as with raccoon, same as with possum, when we're processing wild game, we're looking for these scent glands that are gonna be in here. And as soon as we come across one, I'll make sure I point it out 
you want to try and remove those without nicking them as much as possible just because you're going to contaminate a lot of your meat. So now, I'm making a cut right along the inside here. This is the tenderloin. Hmm. And again, every animal is different, but you've got very similar anatomy to a lot of these. So I'm learning here, the same as all of you, how to best butcher a beaver. So, just a little tenderloin right here. And again, we're gonna remove the other one. All right, another tenderloin off. All right. So, let's get our hind legs off of this. Or, thinking about it a little bit different, Let's go through and just try and take off the loin or the back strap of this. This is gonna be the prime cut on the beaver, if there is a prime cut. So we're gonna see the spine right here of the animal, and we're gonna follow that with our knife, cutting down, staying right along the spine here. We're just cutting down and finding the bones here and then just following the bones to take this off in as single of a piece as we possibly can. Now I'm hitting a bone right here which is where the back leg of the animal is coming in. So I'm just following that right up above it, freeing that up. Looking how this muscle's running, this is definitely part of the leg right here. All the different muscles sort of coming together. Take that right out. And again, going back to this loin, aka back strap. Just trying to take this off in one piece here. loin, beaver loin right here. We're going to go back through and do a little bit finer, more detail work on these here in a little bit. It just gives you the basic idea of where this stuff's coming off. So let's try and take this off on the other side. So what we're seeing right here, or what I'm learning about butchering a beaver, is that the loin is only running to about right here. Um, this is going to be upper leg material for lack of a better descriptor but unlike uh, rabbits which are probably the most similar thing to a beaver that I can think of as a commercially available ingredient rabbit loins will run almost the full length of the body whereas this beaver loin is definitely more I'd say the first 60% of the animal right here is primarily where this back strap or loin is. Following that right along there. And off we come. So again, loin of beaver. All right, so at this point, we could remove these back legs of the animal, and that's probably what I will do. But what I'm gonna do is start to process this a little bit more quickly 
but, and without talking as I go through this, but what I'm doing is I'm taking off as much meat as possible off the bone here, and this is gonna be for our sausage, for grinds, for a lot of different things, but in terms of what we cook for steaks or things along those lines, we've already pulled off the majority of cuts that we're gonna do with that. So we're just gonna generate for sausage here. And you could certainly do a lot more braising cuts of this, take these off in more whole muscle cuts, like back legs, things like that. Now, right here is gonna be a scent gland. We can see this in contrast to some of the other meat right here. Like, you can just see, whereas the gland looks very much like a gland and the meat, more striations of muscle. What was first attracting me to it is all this sort of fatty glands, everything around here. So this is something we're gonna go ahead and get rid of. We don't want this to contaminate all the rest of our meat here or anything else that we'd be using, so go ahead and get rid of that. And all I'm doing right here is using my hands to feel where there's some meat on here that's not really closely attached to the bone, and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that. And that's what we're gonna be making our sausage, grinds, force meats, everything out of. Now, all the meat that we have here in the ribs, if we were really fanatical, we could go through, take our knife, and just remove each of these little striations of meat. But what we're gonna do instead with this is we're gonna make a beaver stock at the end. My wife's a pescatarian behind the camera right here and she's a little bit squeamish about what's going on but she's being a big good sport and filming. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a beaver stock at the end of this process so leaving a little bit of meat still on the bone is not something that's a big concern for me right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the bigger muscles right here. And so like I was saying earlier, all of this meat's gonna have to be cooked to well done. So our cooking processes are gonna be things that are either long-term braising cuts, something ground like sausages or patties of sorts. Um, we could make force meats like terrines and different cooked sausages, but predominantly everything that's coming off of here is going to be either ground or quickly grilled something along the lines of those loins over there or longer term braising cuts but i'm doing less longer term braising cuts with these just because of what i'd like to do with it i'd like to make a lot of sausage with this because i think that's going to be the most approachable way to serve the most number of people beaver and that's the idea behind this is that we want to introduce people to an ingredient that is invasive in our environment, that needed to be removed from the environment, and so we're taking it and giving it sort of a second life and that we can introduce it to people and not waste an ingredient, not waste a life, what that really comes down to. So, again, just taking all this meat off this hind leg right here. 
cleaning this up as best we can. It's not the prettiest, but I'm learning as I go. And it's so interesting because the beaver anatomy is different than a lot of other animals that I've butchered. I've butchered a lot of goats, I've butchered a lot of chickens, rabbits, even whole beef, lambs, things along those lines. But the beaver anatomy is just really, really foreign to me. So we're gonna come back in here. This would have been the upper portion of the tail and we have the tails that we're gonna butcher here in just a little bit. So we're just gonna cut down and see where this meat is on this. And the beaver tail was what I was actually most excited about in getting this because beaver tail was something. Look at that fat, how clear white it is right there. It's just so interesting, so pretty. So I think it's probably gonna be easier. Let's flip this over now. See a little bit more fat that we can get off right here. And what we'll do is we'll cut off all the fat near the end of this and we will render this out as beaver fat to either utilize in the sausages, we'll add a little bit of meat, uh, this fat just to the sausages, but then just to have some beaver fat to whether if we're gonna do these loins and cast irons, you wanna be able to cook in the same fat of what the animal was. So again, just taking off as I see meat around. So again, we're just taking off this meat on the hind quarter of the beaver here. And I'm going through this with the knowledge of that anybody that's watching this does have a basic knowledge of butchery. Otherwise, I can't imagine that you'd be watching a beaver butchery video and not starting off on something simple like chicken or anything other than beaver. <laughs> beaver seems to be about as difficult as a beginning butchery as you could start so I'm working with that knowledge that you all have a working knowledge of a little bit of butchery before watching this video so we're just making some cuts here getting off as much of this meat as possible and as I was saying earlier you could go through and get really detailed with this try and bone all these cuts out into as single of a cuts as you possibly can I just don't know for me if that's the most effective use of my time rather than taking this off grinding the majority of it and making a lot of sausage because that's going to be the most approachable for the most number of people so still got this back tail back here again just making cuts removing as much of this meat as possible and here we've got a couple of scent glands peeking out right back here gland right here gland right here scent glands on the animal we're gonna go ahead and remove these we're trying really hard not to break them or cut them scent glands I'm sure there's a probably a more scientific name for these for the purposes of this video they're scent glands and we want to remove them from our process because we don't want them to contaminate our meat so you see why I tried to remove those there because as I'm making these cuts up into it, I wouldn't want to have nicked those and then have that scent all over my knife for the rest of this. Have to go wash my knife, it'd be a big pain in the butt. So. All right, so looking at it right here, all I'm going back through right now is taking off where I see a little bit of meat that could be removed easily for this. And as I was saying, we're gonna be making beaver stock with this and picking this meat off of it after we make the stock. So if there's a little bit of meat left on here, it's not a huge concern for me. Beaver, very sinewy. Which is another reason that I think this is gonna lend itself really well to grinding applications. Probably, again, lend itself really well to brazing applications as well, but for the purposes of what we're doing, grinding is gonna be our friend. All right, 
let's call this good. There's still a lot of meat on here. We can get really fanatical with this and maybe take another pound of meat off of here. But for the purposes of this, let's call it a day. I'm gonna pop these legs off just to make this easier to fit into a stock pot. Twist that right off. Same deal on this front one right here. Twist it, take it right off. Just a ball and socket joint, same as any hind leg. But you can really see that beavers utilize, obviously, their hindquarters so much more than their forequarters just because of the muscle structure back here on the animal. So, hind legs are off right here. For the purposes of fitting this into a stock pot that's going to be easy for us, I'm going to cleave this in half right here. Just middle of the spine. Bring it right in half. Now, we're going to go back through what all we have. This is gonna be our four legs of the animal. Now, what we're gonna do is just go through these and make sure I don't see any scent glands or anything that I wanna remove from these. I'm gonna keep these on the bone, and these are gonna be my brazing cut, so I'm gonna braise beaver. Um, right here, this is, you see this really, really fatty, looks very different from this meat over here. So this could easily contain a scent gland, so just better to remove it. Could easily not contain a scent gland, but I'd rather have it out of the way and not have to worry about it. Where I see these fatty globules in here, that's definitely a place that I want to look for scent glands as well. Back here, anywhere around this bone, but I'm not seeing any. So we're gonna go ahead and get past this one. Start working on this one over here. Seeing the same sort of fatty part to the meat right here very similar to what we just took off over there and similar to what we took off on the front portion of the animal. So we're gonna make that cut, take that right off. Again, looking back through it, anywhere in this fat right here, are we seeing any scent glands that need to be removed? I feel pretty confident now that we have two cleaned front legs of beaver. So. We're going to utilize these for our brazing cuts. They're going to go back in here. We're going to make this our brazing cut box. We've also got our one little liver right here. Yeah, really nice, interesting, really cool. Smaller than I thought it was going to be. Now, this is going to be the belly of the beaver. So you see all this fat up here on top, very similar to what you would expect from a lot of different bellies. I'm gonna keep this whole as well because I've got enough meat that I can cure for sausage. Everything along this line, you see a nice little fat layer right here in it. Going back through, looking, making sure we don't see any scent glands in there. But we're gonna keep this whole as well. And look, if you see right here, this is something what I'm looking for. I don't know if this is gonna come out in video, but you can see that this white, and this little portion right here in the middle that I'm squeezing forward right here, that could be a scent gland or could easily contaminate our meat. So we're gonna go ahead and get that out. All right, so beaver belly. Roll this up and we'll put this over here in our brazing box as well. Again, two of everything. Looking back through, I always like to start in that same spot that I found something in on the other one so that I can make sure to remove a fat gland or a scent gland if it's there. And looking really through, not seeing anything, not seeing anything. Looks really nice. So we're gonna roll this one up and set this off to the side. Now, our tenderloins that we took off, we're just gonna go ahead and clean these up a little bit. Look, we got another gland back here. Looks like this one was cut through at some point. So that was when we were taking off the, remembering where this came from, this came from the very intersection. I would say that this came out during the gutting process. So I'm not gonna be worried about this that's contaminated by my knife. So I'm just gonna go ahead and discard that. 
and keep our little tender line right here. So that's gonna come over here into our quick cut, our quick cook box. So these can be grilled, these can be sauteed, anything along those lines. And again, just removing this last little bit of fat right here. Taking that right off. All right, tenderloin. Now, this is gonna be the loin of the beaver, or what I am calling the loin for the purposes of this. So we're gonna make a cut right here. Just even this up. You see we've got some sinew up under there, silver skin. What we'd expect to see on the loin or the back strap. We're just gonna remove that right there. Now, this is just a portion right up along the back that was attached to the back strap. We're gonna put this in and go through it when we go through our grinding cuts here in just a second. So, again, just cleaning this up. And we might find that beaver loins are almost not worth what we're doing to get them. Silver skin. This is just, if you know filet mignon, if you're familiar with that, that is beef, and this is where that cut is coming from. So this is the loin, or the back strap. So, not necessarily the prettiest loin I've ever cleaned up, but the first beaver loin. So we're gonna clean that right there. And this would be our portion steaks. If you were doing a tasting menu, something along those lines, this is where this would be utilized. Oh. Beaver loin. All this going in on the bread. All right. We're just gonna try and take this all off at one time. So silver skin, everything right here. There you go, just clean it all up at once. Second one, way prettier than the first. Go figure, second time you do something you're gonna do it better than the first. Cleaning this up right here, just a little bit of silver skin. Nice clean beaver one. This is coming over here into our quick cook box. Now, this is gonna be the most labor intensive part of this project is to go through all of our grind right here. This is all gonna be ground up, but we have to make sure that there's no scent glands, no fat glands, no worms, nothing like that into our grinder here. So let's see, probably something that may be a little bit of worms. Take that right out. Could be something else, could be sitting, could be whatever. Doesn't matter, I don't want it in. So, we've got another box over here that we're just gonna go through all our grind right here, cube it up, make sure there's no, nothing unappetizing, unappealing in there, and go ahead and get it over. Now, this is an extremely fatty cut right here. So, I'm gonna take off that, which appears to be at least a little bit more muscle. Get that into our good grind. Looking for anything, fat glands, scent glands, things that need to come out. And as I was saying earlier, I'd like to render a little bit of this and see what beaver fat tastes like on its own. So we're gonna take all of this right here that's majority fat, a little bit of muscle. Cube this up. This is all gonna go over here. This is gonna be our new fat one, back here. And muscle meat, going into the good grind. This is that rear leg portion that we took off. We were doing that first. Coming down, taking our first loin off. So again, just going through this, getting it in nice pieces right here. Getting all that, going right over. 
I just find this so much easier than going through this at the introduction. So rather than going through, taking off a little bit of fat, taking off a little bit of meat, doing all that, I'm going through taking off everything to start, and then I can come back through and process this a lot easier and a lot quicker. So again, meat right here, fat right here, separating as we go. It's a really fatty portion off the tail right back here. And we do want at least a little bit of fat into our sausage meat. So some of this fat is going in there and then some of the fat is going in for rendering. And again, all I'm doing is getting this in pieces that will fit into the grinder and making sure there's no fat glands in here. You see a lot of these really like really intense veins that were running through this. So, I don't know. Every time I'm doing butchery, I'm learning different things about the anatomy of an animal and you're just wondering what was going on in this beaver that these veins are so pronounced or do beaver veins, are they just really pronounced? They're carrying a lot of, ah, oh, look right here. Look at these glands. Finding some. So we're gonna cut around these on either side and just remove that. Nice and easy. And then I go back through a little bit more closely now that I know that this was an area that fat glands were present. Try and get those out. All right. Same deal in this one. Cutting through. Taking things out. If you've got pieces that are small enough to go into your grinder already, all you're doing is looking over them, making sure that you don't have any glands in them. This meat is so dark and so, like, just obviously full of minerals, full of vitamins. Wild game meat is just so interesting to cook with from a chef perspective and then from a nutrition perspective. So much more nutritious for us and just overall better quality meat. As long as it's being cooked properly. Fatty part right here. Take off this fat, smaller pieces, so it'll actually render. We've already got almost enough fat fried sausage, I would say, so I'm not as concerned about getting as much fat for our sausage now. All of this, ready to go. Going through, cleaned up. Same deal with this, going through, looking. Fatty portion right here, get that out. All right, so again, just continuing through this, getting all the fat out that we possibly can, saving that for rendering, and then all the meat cubing it up for sausage. And we have a second beaver to get into here that will probably turn into a second video. And with that video, we will just butcher, I won't talk because I will assume that you have watched this first video and you just wanna see me do it again. So we're gonna pull this fat out here. There we go. Fatty part right up here on top. All right, so my favorite part of the beaver right here is the tail, and this is what we're gonna be going through and skinning right now. And I have been so intrigued by this to find out how this sort of skin comes off. This is almost reptilian, is the feel to this. Look at this meat. Just so interesting here. My knife is gonna need a little bit of a sharpening after this. Good God, all right. So beaver meat, or beaver tail skin, incredibly tough. This looks like fish meat. But it's such a high fat content to this. Try 
not cut my wrist right here. For those of you that have skinned a pork belly, this is a very similar process, um, albeit tremendously much more difficult. Definitely not the prettiest thing I've ever seen. Mm. Alright, so looking at this, just so interested where the bones are gonna run through it. So before I go through and skin the other side of this, I'm gonna see if I can cut right down on where this is actually gonna come off at. Alright, so looks very similar to a crocodile actually, or alligator. All right, so we got, I guess what I'm gonna call a little chunk of beaver tail right here. Wow, this skin is so hard to get off. So, that, I'm gonna make that into beaver bacon beaver tail bacon. That's a doozy. Now looking at this, I don't think there's too much more that I can get off of this. Even on this other side, by the time I skin it, I have very little left, so. 
we'll just go ahead and call this. All right, here, done. I could go back through and take a lot of this fat out of this and use this for our rendering as well. And I may do that, but we won't bore you all with that video. So this little mess that I've created right here is my first attempt at taking the meat out of a beaver tail. And there we are, two somewhat beaver tail portions. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's come over here and take a look at this. We've got carcass of the meat right here. Carcass of the animal. Fat to render. Meat to marinate and make sausage patties, grinds out of. Two front legs for braising. Two bellies for curing into bacon, braising, whatever we want to do. A nice little liver that we found. Tenderloins and loins off the beef. Thank you so much for checking out my first potential pantry video. It's been a pleasure to share beaver butchering with all of you in my first experience. So stay tuned. We'll keep putting these videos out. And you guys keep watching. Like, subscribe, check us out, share us around. But thanks so much for joining.